Let's not be rash here. All right, these gentlemen know we got a score we need to settle. Hey everyone, welcome back to another marvelous video. Today we've got something really special for all you Batman fans, whether you're into the movies or the comics. The Penguin series, a spin-off from the 2022 Batman film, has introduced us to a character right at the center of Gotham's crime families, Sophia Falcone, the daughter of one of the biggest crime bosses. Given her father's influence and ruthless ways, you'd expect her to be just as cutthroat, right? Well, that's what we're here to explore. She's definitely a feared villain in the Penguin series, but what's her backstory? Let's jump into the Batman world and uncover everything about her. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Origins of Sophia Falcone Sophia Falcone made her first appearance in the comic Batman The Long Halloween, issue number 6. As you might already know, Gotham City has been terrorized by several mafia families, like the Marconis and the Falcones. Well, Sophia is the daughter of the head of the Falcone crime family, Carmine, and his wife Luisa Falcone. She also has two siblings, Mario and Alberto. Since Carmine is such a well-known crime lord himself, he obviously wanted to shape his daughter in his image. So he was very tough on Sophia while raising her. He ended up doing a good job as a crime father, I guess, because once she was old enough to understand things, Sophia also became manipulative, full of rage, and quite violent. Now, because we're dealing with a crime family, of course there's no scope for emotional love here. Carmine only ever gave Sophia tough love, but it looks like she never ended up having any daddy issues because she loved him the most. Well, we see her for the first time in the comics when Carmine frees her from the Gotham Penitentiary. Oh, and by the way, at this moment she's known as Sophia Giganti, since she married Rocco Giganti and has two kids, Luigi and Vin Vincenzo. With her first look, we can tell that she has a scary presence because of how huge her character is. I mean, she looks bigger than her own father. And if you think she reminds you of someone from the Godfather family, then you stand correct. Jeff Loeb, one of the creators who made her character, designed her after Sonny Corleone, the eldest son of the infamous mafia don Vito Corleone. The reason why Carmine got Sophia out of the prison is someone known as Holiday. He's a serial killer who kills only on holidays and suddenly starts targeting the crime families of Gotham City. So naturally, the Falcons were on his radar. In fact, Holiday ended up killing Carmine's son Alberto on New Year's Eve and Sophia's cousin John Vitti. Carmine needed Sophia to find him before Batman or the police did. Well, she tried for a year but kept failing. Although later we find out that Holiday was none other than one of Sophia's brothers, Alberto Falcone, who faked his death and was then captured and imprisoned. After a while, something happened that changed Sophia's life forever. Her father was attacked and killed by Two Face, also known as Harvey Dent, the district attorney. And this happened right in front of her. So of course she's angry and wants to go on a killing spree. She she tries to go after Two-Face to kill him, but our favorite Catwoman stops her. Sophia ends up fighting with her, but she gets thrown out of a window, and it looks like she might just die. Don't worry, she doesn't die of course. Angelo Mirti, one of Carmine's men, saves her, and then she decides to make her escape and go live with her brother Mario in Italy. Her father's death affected her so much that she kind of disfigures herself on purpose, just so that she can have the same scar on her face as Daddy Dearest. After this, we find out that apparently the fight with Catwoman injured her legs so badly that she now has to be in a wheelchair, but she eventually overcame this weakness and was able to walk again, a secret she decided not to tell anyone. Transition to Antagonist After the long Halloween, the sequel Batman Dark Victory, created by Jeff Loeb and illustrated by Tim Sale, reveals an unexpected twist in Sophia's story. While she's in Italy and misses her father's funeral, she comes up with a great plan to get even. That of course involved killing Two-Face. So remember the other rival family, the Marconis? Sophia decided to hire Salvatore Moroni's two sons, Pino and Umberto Moroni, in order to kill Two-Face. At the time, he was in the same place as Sophia's brother, Alberto, Arkham Asylum. Soon Catwoman, who's also in Italy, tells Sophia that her father's corpse has been taken, and she demands a million dollars to get it on her behalf from whoever is responsible. That ends up being unnecessary since Sophia soon receives a parcel that has Carmine's ring finger inside it. Of course, upon seeing this, she's reminded of her father's lessons, to always be full of rage. So she goes on a killing spree and starts murdering everyone who's connected to Harvey Dent, be it the city officials or the police officers. The fun part is that she manages to pin down Dent for all her killings, so no one will know that it's her. This is the part where she actually completes her transition into an antagonist and becomes the one whom we know as the hangman. Why the name you ask? It's because she kills people by hanging them and then leaves mysterious messages beside her victims in the fashion of that kid's game hangman. She uses case files to do this so that would make them easier to track back to Dent. Well soon the Joker finds out Sophia's secret that she's actually not bound to a wheelchair and can walk just fine. He decides to attack her at her home ground which is also the place where Alberto currently is because he's been put on house arrest. Surprisingly nothing happens to Sophia because her dear brother decides 
tries to save her. Now, at this point, Sophia has already become ruthless and a serial killer. Commissioner James Gordon will obviously not be happy with that, so he assigned a task force to stop the hangman, whose identity, by the way, no one knows. But Sophia is too good at what she does, and she soon finds out about this task force and annihilates them all. She also does not let a good deed go unappreciated, so she chooses to save Alberto from the Calendar Man, but he's already wounded. Like her father, Sophia despises weakness. Alberto was too weak for her pity, so she kills him without hesitation. After all these killings, the only person left for Sophia to kill is the one who ignited the most rage in her, Two-Face. She tried her best and was almost too close to killing him when Batman arrived on the scene. You see, he found out that Sophia was the hangman, so he makes her fight him, which gives Two-Face a chance to catch a breather, and he uses the opportunity to shoot Sophia in the head, bringing an end to the hangman. Role in the Penguin series. Before we get to Sophia Falcone's appearance in the new Penguin series, let me remind you of a special film from 2022. You guessed it right, it's none other than The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves. Now, if you recall, Carmine Falcone, Sophia's father, was killed in the film by the Riddler. Well, the Penguin series looked at the events after that incident. Naturally, the world of crime is left with an empty throne now that Carmine is no more, and Penguin, once a loyal servant to the family, wants to become the new crime lord. That is where Sophia also comes in, because she wants to prove that that she actually is her father's daughter by taking up a more active role in everything criminal. Unlike the comics, our live-action Sophia is not someone who looks like a giant, but she sure looks ready to send shivers down your spine. Played by Kristen Milioti, Sophia in the series has an extremely threatening presence from the first time we lay eyes on her. This part is a little similar to her first appearance in the comics, but the rest of the story so far is not. As the Penguin series begins, Sophia is seen being released from Arkham Asylum. There's a sense of fear in people when they hear the name because she's known as the Hangman. Do you see how it already deviates from the comics? Because it was not until much later that anyone discovered her serial killer persona. Well, in the series, she was apparently sent to prison for killing seven women, and she did it all by strangling them with a hangman's noose. Classic move, Sophia. A twist in the story soon appears in episode 4, when we find out that it was in fact Carmine Falcone who murdered all those women and put the blame on his own daughter. There's also speculation that he also might have killed Sophia's mother by strangling her in the same hangman fashion. But this episode does end with another twist, where we see that most of the Falcone family has been poisoned by Sophia in their sleep. Now that does look like the work of a true serial killer, so who knows, maybe she was responsible for all those murders. What do you think? We often see some trauma in Sophia, which is connected to her mother's death, and it's so bad that she often has nightmares of being hanged herself. What an irony. At this point, we already know that her story is not being truly adapted from the comics. So if you were waiting to watch the holiday killer make its move, then forget about it. They straighten that out at the beginning of the series, when the penguin kills Alberto. He wants to suck up to Sophia to avoid any suspicion of him. So in episode 2, it looks like the two have formed an alliance, since Sophia is dealing with her new drug in town, Bliss. Well, a lot of the penguin secrets spill out when they're both attacked by another crime family, the Maronis. So, based on what Sophia did to her own family, who knows what she has in store for the penguin? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Legacy and Evolution Sophia Falcone's character has always been at the center of power, because she literally comes from one of the major crime families in Gotham City. Before her recent major introduction in the Penguin series, we did get to see her once on television. Let me jog your memories and remind you of her version in the TV series Gotham, which is developed by Bruno Heller and produced by Warner Brothers. In this series, her character was played by the ecstatic Crystal Reed, and we met her in Season 4 in the episode titled A Dark Knight, They Who Hide Behind Masks. Here she lived in Miami, handling her father's business. Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, has made many enemies, and Sophia is probably at the top of the list. She actually decides to help Commissioner Gordon in taking down the Penguin. So, as part of her big plan, she becomes friends with the Penguin, to always have insider information. Gradually, she makes things work out her way, and the Penguin ends up in Arkham Asylum. Her insanity has clearly always been a part of any version of her character, because she will often do things that surprise us in the most exciting way possible. Well, in the Gotham series, it was evident that she had a moral compass, because she did feel guilty when her father's men were getting murdered. Does she have the same kind of moral compass in Kristen Milioti's version? We can't say that for sure yet. We'll just have to wait and see where her story goes. Well, apart from these live-action versions, we also got an animated version of her character in the film Batman The Long Halloween Part 2, which was directed by Chris Palmer. Here, her character was voiced by Layla Berzins. Now, if there's anything we can say about her evolution from the Gotham series to the Penguin series, is that she definitely seems more manipulative and powerful. Marvelous Verdict Well, my keen Batman fans, that brings us to the end of another Marvelous video. Even though the Penguin series does not follow the comics with absolute precision, we know that the creators certainly took a lot of inspiration from the long Halloween issues. I feel like Sophia Falcone's character still has a lot to show us in the series. We're just going to have to stay curious. So what is it about her character that you like or do not like? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Until next time, guys, it's goodbye, have a good one.